Welcome to the CanMed Coffee Talk podcast, where we talk with the leading minds in cannabis science, medicine, cultivation, and safety testing. I am your host, Ben Amaralt. I'm the marketing manager at Medicinal Genomics and proud member of the team that puts on the CanMed conference. All right, we've gotten a lot of great feedback from the announcement of our CanMed 23 Innovation and Investment Summit. If you haven't already heard, CanMed 23 is going to be bigger and better than any of our previous events in a few very important ways. First, as you've noticed, the name is a little different. It's now the CanMed 23 Innovation and Investment Summit, which highlights both the nature of breakthroughs being presented at the event and the inclusion of principles to fund those efforts. Second, CanMed 23 will be held at the Marriott Resort at Marco Island, Florida. This will give attendees like you the chance to fit in a little R&R at one of the most beautiful vacation venues in the world with amenities like world-class golf, tennis, yoga, massages on the beach, and more. Third, the summit will feature immersive workshops to bring you up to speed on the latest in capital markets, medical training, and deep dives into cultivation and laboratory technology. Although CAMED 23 will be different in these ways, some things will remain the same. We will still feature world-class oral presentations in the areas of cannabis science, medicine, cultivation, and safety testing, curated by our CanMed Advisory Board for impact and importance. In fact, our call for abstracts is open now, and you can submit your abstract for consideration for a CanMed 23 presentation. Just use the link in the show description. We will also continue to share our knowledge with the cannabis community through our CanMed archive, social media platforms, and of course, the CanMed Coffee Talk podcast. So even if you can't join us in Marco Island, you can still be part of the CanMed community. However, if you do want to join us at CanMed 23, you can request your invitation now at canmedevents.com. Our guest today is David Trailer. David is the Senior Managing Director at Golden Eagle Partners, a firm he originally founded to advise life science companies. After advising in various transactions in the life science sector, he took an interest in the cannabis sector and started advising cannabis companies before eventually re-founding Golden Eagle Partners in 2014 to focus on advising companies across the cannabis sector. Before Golden Eagle Partners, David served at leading investment banking firms, including Pacific Growth Equities, Karras & Company, and Headwaters MB. During his banking tenures, he has advised private and public biotechnology and medical device companies in various transactions, including IPOs, public offerings, private offerings, and mergers and acquisitions totaling over $500 million in value. David and Golden Eagle Partners will host a Capital Markets Workshop at CanMed 23, which will explore a global perspective of the hurdles, issues, and concepts around funding cannabinoid and cannabis innovation. During our conversation, we discuss the current cannabis investment outlook, the challenges cannabis innovators face when raising capital, how federal prohibition affects innovation and investment into cannabis technologies, emerging international markets that may eventually outpace the U.S., and a preview of the Capital Markets Workshop taking place at CanMed 23. Before we get to my interview with David, I want to thank this episode's sponsor, Golden Eagle Partners. Golden Eagle Partners are transactional experts that have combined experience in the early stages of cannabis and life science sectors, which help them confidently close strategic and financial transactions that match the near and long-term goals of their clients. They specialize in mergers, acquisitions, reverse mergers, financings, and incremental transactions such as licensing, joint ventures, and co-development arrangements. Learn more at GoldenEaglePartners.com. Okay, and without any further ado, please good morning, David. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, indeed. All right, I'm excited to talk with you today about investment in cannabis innovations. Now, we've talked with 
many researchers and innovators over the years on the podcast and seeing them at CanMed, uh, really working on moving the industry forward through um, new discoveries and new innovations. So, however, they need capital and investment to bring those discoveries and technologies to life. And that's where firms like you in, at Golden Eagle Partners can help. So I was hoping... Could you tell us a bit about the cannabis companies that you guys are working with and what you help them do? Yeah, thanks, Ben. So first of all, the thing to start off with, maybe before we talk about Golden Eagle Partners in specific, is really what is the definition of cannabis? Because I think, you know, this industry is so crazy and part of that craziness results from the fact that everybody's got their own nomenclature. Our perspective is, you know, it's derived from the fact that cannabis is the genus of this wonderful plant and so when we consider cannabis we don't we're not just talking marijuana or thc plus preparations whatever you want to call it Uh, we believe cannabis is is all encompassing of things stemming from the plant whether it's thc plus what we call thc plus or marijuana preparations thc minus which then we break it down into industrial hemp and then what we call molecular hemp like cbd cbg you know cbn all that stuff uh, mm-hmm. We have been, uh, so Go- Golding Eagle Partners, the firm, uh, we started jumping in, we jumped into cannabis in 2013. And frankly, Ben, we've been very lucky about what we've been doing and where we're at now, because I could have never predicted when I was getting my undergrad degrees in biochem and molecular bio at CU Boulder in the 80s that I'd be doing this. Uh, but it's it's awesome. We ended up uh, I ended up jumping into biotech companies' operational roles for 15 years in companies in Boulder, Berlin, Germany, Silicon Valley, and did all the way through project management into business development. And uh, also lucky enough to invent on three patents. Two of those are bioprocessing, and everybody knows bioprocessing is a big part of this industry. Whether you're calling it THC plus, minus, whatever. I got into investment banking or uh, jumped into investment banking 2005 in San Francisco doing biotech deals and came back to Colorado where I'm originally from in 2009 and then 12, found a Golding of Partners and everybody know that's when uh, Washington, Colorado kicked things off with adult use. So in 2013, we started advising companies. In 2014, I was advising a company called Cerna. Uh, they were one of the first three public companies in the space. And so I was jumped in full time as their chief business officer. And did that for about a year. And through that experience, Ben realized that it was it's not easy to find good capital for good cannabis companies. Uh, and it wasn't easy then, and it's not easy now, unfortunately. Uh, but after leaving CERNA, we act- I reactivated my registrations with FINRA. So both Matt Doherty and I, Matt uh, works with me over here at GP, uh, are both registered uh, with FINRA. So we've helped, uh, we've done 25 deals in the cannabis space. Uh, we helped Pharmacan raise 20, $30 million in 2018. And we also helped a company called Panacea, a leading hemp processor raise, uh, do a $14 million upfront strategic uh, deal in 2019. And we've talked around the U.S. from San Francisco, San Diego, the Hamptons, Miami, Denver, but also internationally. We've talked on cannabis in Toronto twice, Grand Cayman, Frankfurt twice, Dubai in 2018, Davos in 2020 during the World Economic Forum, and then we sponsored an event in uh, Berlin uh, just a month and, month and a half ago, so that was very cool. And then we had our first Israeli client in 2016, so we've been doing international, Ben, for over six years. And then also lucky enough, uh, as I mentioned, we've just been lucky with my whole life about where we're at because I also played pro lacrosse back in the late 80s with the field first field lacrosse league. And uh, so then I joined Athletes for Care about five, six years ago. And so I'm an athlete ambassador for them. And then they asked me a year and a half ago to be the chairman of their scientific advisory council. So we've done that. And so I work, uh, put together a group with some of the leading lights in the industry, like Ethan Rousseau, uh, Deb Kimless, uh, Guillermo Moreno Sanz from Spain and Raquel Perube from Uruguay. So, so we kind of pull this whole thing together. It's a long winded explanation, but to your point too, uh, the, the, one thing that's interesting, Ben, is that if you really understand and have been in biotech and now where cannabis is going, you know, it's going more towards molecules all the time, Delta-8, whether you hate it or like that molecule, yeah. that's kind of an in- indication that this industry is going more towards molecules. I believe in the entourage effect, but I think we're going to need to deconvolute a lot of these things, which gets to your question, you know, on innovation. 
And one of the last company, biotech company I worked at, we were one of the leading systems biology companies and we couldn't do a $20 million series B. So we had to do an inside round of 6 million. I lost my job and so did 30% of the people in the company because of that. So I understand full well from that experience, Ben, that I don't care how good your technology is and how many patents you have. If you don't have money, you don't have money. And to add to that, innovation is extremely expensive. R&D takes money and you got to sink money in for hoping something comes down the line. And just to add to that, from my experience being an inventor on three patents, just because you have a patent, most patents don't monetize. So, you know, what are, are we have a unique skill set, as I mentioned, to talk to companies around the world, uh, whether they're in THC plus, THC minus. They're most of the companies that are really going to get above the noise, whether it's here or internationally, have to innovate. They need competitive advantage. And a good way to get that right is IP, intellectual property, patents, et cetera, trademarks. Uh, and so that's one of the things we're doing right now. Uh, it's a very tough funding environment. Uh, but I think the smart money is looking to the future, and part of that future is innovation, right? Is that absolutely answer your question? And it, it certainly does, and it's a good segue because I mean that's what KMED's all about is bringing together innovators, and so that's why we're really happy to have Golden Eagle Partners be part of KMED twenty three uh, because you're leading a pre conference workshop on capital markets. Uh, to help these folks. So what are you planning to cover in that workshop and why should attendees make sure they don't miss it? Yeah. So great question. And, you know, the one thing uh, that I think a good justification to talk about while we jumped in and doing this is, you know, we've been sponsoring and we looked at, we just had a discussion this morning, we've sponsored over 30 events. Uh, And frankly, we just sent an email to somebody. We don't attend events unless we sponsor and we participate and I'm on a panel, frankly. Um, and just because we want to continue to be a KOL. And when CanMed came up, we talked to Brendan, and I was one of the first uh, finance people to talk at CanMed. We did that last year. And then Brendan said, hey, when we're at CanMed this year, we're looking to do a capital markets. And, you know, we have a pretty significant advantage uh, in what we do. And frankly, because this came out of uh, talking to Brendan and other people I know, you talk to other uh, transactional groups or investment banks, they have a cannabis group and they have uh, a biotech group, but they don't have a group that combines both like we do. Uh, so our whole idea was, you know, if we're really going to be the real deal and not lose this advantage we have, we need to be the lead sponsor at CanMed. So we jumped into that. And I think what we want to do with CanMed, and a matter of fact, you know, I think we're on the same page with medicinal genomics team on this. I think it's going to be a great event. We're part of the thing we want to pattern after is red herring, which many of the people in the tech and the biotech space, the old guard understand. Red herring was a magazine uh, in the uh, 80s and 90s that really took root in all the tech uh, innovation that went on in Silicon Valley and around the world at that time. And was red herring was a very cool amalgamation of really a lot of cutting edge technologies, finance, you know, how, because again, you know, all this innovation is expensive. And so we want CanMed to be essentially something like that, where it's, it's definitely going to be talking about capital markets, about capital uh, funding, uh, transactional options, definitely. But it's also going to uh, talk to, uh, to the extent on what new technologies are coming Uh, down the pipe, what technologies are currently in cannabis? And then, you know, are you talking ancillary to cannabis or or deep into cannabis where you'd like to talk about innovation and intellectual property? Uh, Because that's also going to be a very interesting thing over time that evolves. Uh, And certainly when I have the international component to it, uh, to see, you know, what companies are doing what things in the space. And as you know, too, Ben, this, this industry is quickly, you know, blowing up into different little sectors and subsectors. And so we want to make sure that we're covering, you know, the technology side, the, the management side, uh, a lot of the operational side, but it is really going to relate to where we're at now with technology innovation. And then where is it going to be in the next year, year and a half? Great. And I guess that's a good question to ask then. So what, what technologies and news do you think we're going to see? Maybe where, what do you think we're going to see before CanMed in May? Is there anything in particular you think will be coming out? Uh, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. 
Uh, well, I think one of the things, uh, we're, we're, well, one of the things that I mentioned in Frankfurt, Ben, is our thought is, uh, you, you know, we don't believe there's really a crystal ball for cannabis. And, uh, and we talked to a well-known lawyer in the space in uh, Berlin, and he had a different perspective that he believes there is. And I think, though, and I agree with him to some extent that you can appreciate and kind of predict maybe where certain geographies are going to have like states or countries, how it's going to evolve over time, starting with medical and then going into adult use. But I think being a being a, an advisor and looking at companies, trying to tell what's coming down the road in different things, especially when you're talking about technology is, is next to impossible. But, you know, our expectation, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, the FDA is probably going to come out with some type of guidance, uh, whether it's on cannabinoids, cannabis, CBD, uh, between now and next May. Uh, don't know if it's going to be good or bad for the industry. And maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe we don't have that. But uh, we think definitely, uh, to my earlier point, that the molecular side's going to continue uh, to be important. Uh, again, we believe in the entourage effect and a lot of times one plus one plus one equals five. But uh, also, you know, for example, uh, the, the Delta eight side and then, you know, obviously CBG and a number of things coming to the fore. We talked to a company in Boston last week at ICDP that has a really interesting THC analog. It's doing as some really uh, interesting data, but more, more importantly too, I think we need to really explore the human side. There's been a lot of time and effort been put into the plant genetics and you know how really, if you look at a chemovar or strain, whatever you want to call it, we call them chemovars. If, it, if somebody says it's one thing, it, a lot of times it's not, it's another thing. But you know, the side that really has not had a lot of effort put into it is the, the human side, the human genetics, because each person does act differently with uh, a lot of these different compounds and the endocannabinoid system itself is, is a unique uh, system. And there's a company called Endocanna Health that's doing some very interesting things that we uh, worked with in the past on looking at person's genetic background and makeup. And we think that that's going to continue to be a big part of uh, the cannabinoid, the cannabis sector in the next, you know, six to 12 months. Yeah, absolutely. That whole, that whole, um, phenomena of cannabis affecting people differently, the same products differently. I was actually at a family party this weekend and we were having a conversation about that very thing. So uh, you know, it's very real. Right. Well, and that's the other thing too, is, you know, Ben, the cool thing that we're, we're trying to do at GEP, Golden Eagle Partners, is to, to provide money to companies that are going to generate the data to move this industry forward because everybody knows, you know, I know everybody that's listening to this knows somebody or themselves where they've given a prep, certain preparation to somebody and like, Oh my God, you know, there's a woman I worked at and got to know at the local bank who's taking Ambien and NyQuil every night, couldn't sleep and went through a number of different things with her and gave her Delta eight. And guess what? She said it changed her life. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. You, you need the funding to do the research and especially if you're sort of waiting in the waters with these massive pharmaceutical companies who just have boatloads of cash to to innovate and to you know generate data um you know we need to keep up somehow yeah well and also one thing real quick uh ben that that kind of gets to the point of and i mentioned this with brendan mckernan uh from your firm last week on what is the target audience for CAMED. And I think what we can, if we do it right, I think we ought to be getting pretty much a whole spectrum. Hopefully people that have used some of these preparations and have found an amazing result from it. Hopefully, you know, leading uh, finance people and then you have operational people in companies, whether they're plant touching or non-plant touching, whether they're science-based or non-science-based. And then other people ancillary, you know, uh, to that, whether it's uh, IP lawyers or or accountants, what have you. I think the the topics that we're going to cover, uh, our goal, uh, whenever we do something like this or sit down in front of people, Ben, is hopefully the goal is that people walk out of the room and don't say that was a waste of time. And I firmly believe that CanMed is, is going to be a really it's the first of its kind, I believe. If we do it right, it's going to be the first of its kind in cannabis in the world. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So going back to the investor side, so what sort of technologies are investors interested in? And in general, what's sort of like the climate for investment in the cannabis sector right now? Uh, there isn't a climate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's very tough. I was just uh, talking to uh, somebody today that you know the only other climate funding and climate be a, a funding climate that I've seen similar uh, to this since I've been you know doing transactions for fifteen to twenty years, whether it's business development or investment banking, what have you, is two thousand eight, two thousand nine, but obviously cannabis. There were, you know, obviously cannabis operators, et cetera, doing things, THC plus, THC minus. But yeah, I mean, it really got going, as we mentioned in, in uh, 2012. And then, you know, the first real uh, legal sales of REC in Colorado were January 1, 2014. So that was six years before that. So this, yeah, is the worst funding environment uh, that we've ever seen for cannabis companies. And I think people would, uh, listening to this would agree. Uh, with that being said, there is there is capital out there. Uh, you have to be creative, uh, persistent, persevere, um, and look to different sources of capital. And also, you have to be uh, smart about you know not putting your valuation out there and and kind of going to the market with various different structures to be creative on that side. Um, so I think that's kind of what we typically tell our clients and people that are, we're talking to about being our clients. It's very tough, but I think uh, there's money out there. And also, I think you're going to continue to have new groups uh, that are on the outside looking in, right? Or new companies, new firms. Uh, for example, this week, I'm reaching out to a lot of the biotech VCs, et cetera, that I've known for the last few years. And we finally have a few companies that I think would uh, pique their interest. And so... You know, it's it's always a phone call away. So I, I think it's a tough environment, but I think if you're out there looking for money, uh, it's there to be had. You just have to be smart about how much you want to raise and how you go about it. And now, is the tough climate, is it mainly just the state of the economy or is it a souring on the cannabis industry in general? Uh, well, uh, I have to be careful with this because I don't want to piss too many people off, but... <laughs> I think uh, it's, it's, a, it's, well, it's a lot of different factors, personally. I mean, having been in it so long, uh, I mean, part of it is the fact that, frankly, the, 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 the industry is kind of a shit show. Uh, or, sorry, dumpster fire. You can edit out or put in whatever you want. But the sure. idea is that you have, for example, 280E, uh, which is very tough, and other industries don't deal with that. Um, so that puts pressure on margins. Frankly, you have a lot of people that jumped into this early that thought it was easy to grow weed, and it is easy to grow weed, but it's really, really hard to grow really good cannabis, right? So that's a problem. You have all these different regulatory requirements. You have the fact that there's a patchwork across states where if you want to go into different states, you have to build the same essentially functionality, which costs money, which essentially leads to diseconomies of scale. Most industries have economies of scale when they build bigger and better and brighter. That doesn't happen in cannabis. Uh, you know, just to whole, and, you know, frankly, another part of it, I think, Ben, is the fact that you have money. Not all money in this industry is smart money. I mean, there's a lot of people and in, in, uh, that were investing a lot of these public companies and the assumption was, OK, well, Biden's in the White House, you know, pot's going to be legalized in the U.S. And then all of a sudden it's going to be hunky dory. And when that didn't happen last year, all of a sudden the bloom is off the rose and people have ran screaming for the exits. Mm. Right. Uh, which is uh, which in itself is, <clears throat> excuse me, is a is a problem. But I think over time that's that's going to change. But I think to me. Uh, well, the other thing to add to that is the legalization question that I think you, you know, we talked about covering. One of the main key things we would like to talk about is, you know, and my, both my parents were politicians. I would never advise a company to define their strategy around po what politicians may or may not do. Uh, and that comes from a well-educated background in, in Silicon Valley, right? So 
that being said, I think what companies were telling companies is just keep operating and surviving uh, through this. But with regards to the legalization question too, we, uh, we don't think it's going to happen in the next two years. Uh, maybe something like safe or something comes through and, but, you know, again, it gets back to the 2018 farm bill, you know, that passed in December, 2018. And then December, 2019, one of our clients was shipping hemp from Oklahoma to, to Colorado and the truck ran a stop light in Oklahoma and got pulled over. And then all of a sudden the, the police in Oklahoma thought it was, you know, the biggest drug bust in state history and thought it was marijuana or TH, whatever you want to call it. Right. And not hemp. Uh, so the main point is, you know, they didn't get the memo. And I think the same thing is going to happen when they try to legalize it here in the U.S. I mean, cannabis is such a unique industry that crosses so many federal agencies, DEA, FDA, IRS, Fed, you know, shall I go on, right? And so to try to address all those complexities and do it right in a piece of leg- one or two pieces of legislation, I'm pretty much sure that, that they're going to screw it up. So... Everybody thinks if legalization happens, it's going to be a nice black and white. All of a sudden, everything's hunky dory. And frankly, I think that's a pipe dream. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry to be such a downer, but uh, <laughs> I, you know, know, I think you're... the people that are going to be surviving in this industry, the ones that are perseverance and really stick to it, are going to make money in the end. But it's it's you know it's not going to be easy for sure. Yeah. No. Agreed. There and. All right. So we, we sort of discussed the challenges in the U.S. and, you know, it is the largest cannabis market by far. But what about international markets? Um, which one of those are you which of those are you paying attention to? Uh, all of them. <laughs> no. Uh, well, we, we uh, one thing that has frankly helped us uh, over the last two years with the pandemic. Frankly, the pandemic's really helped us, Ben. And, and I appreciate the fact that it hasn't helped everybody. And as a matter of fact, I have two daughters and it's been very tough on them. So definitely I, I, my thoughts are out to people that have not had such an easy time in the pandemic. For us, it's been a benefit uh, on the fact that, you know, we were doing international, as mentioned, we were in Davos in January, 2020, right before the pandemic shut things down. We're the only cannabis investment bank there. Canaccord was there year, year before and didn't make it in 2020. And, so we weren't able to travel the last couple of years, but we had Zoom. So we had the excuse to said, hey, guys, you know, we can't uh, make it to Davos like we did or Dubai, but let's jump on the Zoom call. So, you know, in the last 12 months or so, we've talked to operators in Mongolia and Macedonia, Lesotho, South Africa, Colombia, Peru, Brazil, Australia, Thailand, Greece, Cyprus. I mean, Canary Islands, we could go on. So. Uh, we are one, uh, we believe we're certainly a global leader in cannabis finance. And so we're interested in a lot of different markets. You know, I think South America is very interesting. Uh, certainly Europe is, uh, the one thing though, that I did mention in Davos that I think most people that are in the know in this industry have been around the block and will, uh, full, fully agree that pretty much most geographies, when you roll them out, whether it's a new market or whatever, it's going to take more time than you expect. Uh, you know, you look in the U.S., same thing here. New York is going to take longer. Pretty sure that Florida did, Massachusetts did, Nevada didn't, Colorado didn't, Illinois still use really didn't, but California's taken some time to roll out. Uh, and then you look at Europe. I mean, Spain has taken forever. U.K. has been on a slow burn forever. France. Germany's, you know, making some noise. So certainly that's one reason why I went, went to Frankfurt, Berlin this summer. Germany, we believe, certainly could be the legal, you know, the 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 real um, linchpin or a lot of people are saying how Germany goes is how Europe's going to go. But again, back to that original point, I mean, the scuttlebutt in Germany is that they're probably looking at adult use and early, uh, late 2023 or early 2024, but most likely is the points I just mentioned is probably going to be past that. You just, for some reason, you know, there's a lot of reasons, but it usually kind of pushes, pushes, pushes out on that. But, uh, you know, Germany's, uh, very interesting. As a matter of fact, we're going to moderate a panel during MJ biz in Las Vegas with some of the leading German operators. Um, so yeah, Germany's, uh, a very interesting market, but you know, you never know this, you know, maybe all of a sudden South America will light up or Australia is definitely doing some interesting things, certainly on the medical side too. So, but one other point too, I want to mention on this question, 
the U.S. market right now is potentially and, and probably, you know, the biggest market, especially with adult use. But, you know, with all the problems the U.S. has, as we've just discussed, and if other countries like Germany really skirt those or don't deal with those and they're allowed to grow in a different set of regulations because they're not regulating cannabis in the different states in Germany, like Baden, Württemberg, et cetera, and Bavaria, it's national uh, like Canada has done. So that could make, you know, the U S if the U S doesn't watch it. And I mentioned this in my talk in Frankfurt, I mean, there's no guarantee the U S market's going to be the biggest, baddest cannabis market in the world. Uh, in the coming years, it may stay that way, but our politicians have to, frankly, get you know their stuff together and and help out the industry because I think everybody in this industry appreciates the fact that there's a lot of impedances that we talked about, and we need to get rid of those some some of those to really help the industry get to where it need, where it should be. Frankly, Ben. So yeah, absolutely. And so as you're looking at these different countries, you know, going back to innovation, which ones do you think are the furthest along in terms of you know coming out with new innovations for the industry? Well, it's got to be Israel, right? Israel's been at this. I mean, Rafi Meshulam elucidated, you know, THC and the structure in 1964. Uh, I mean, that's the one thing that we can also bring up in, in CanMed that I think is really interesting. If you look at really the evolution of biotechnology and this question you have on innovations, I think appropriate place to cover it. You know, biotech, they, they, Watson and Crick found the DNA structure of DNA in 1953. And then 20 years later, in 1973, you had Cohen and Boyer with their seminal technology, recombinant technology discovery that, that Stanford made a ton of money out of, frankly. Uh, and then, you know, five years later from that, it's 1978, you had Genentech go uh, do an IPO. And then you had, you know, this burgeoning blow up of biotech in the early 80s into the 90s. But then you counter that with, you know, cannabis and innovation in cannabis really has been slow. You know, it seems like every, you know, maybe that's because uh, I've never thought about this before, Ben, but maybe it's a problem because everybody that works in cannabis smokes too much cannabis and that's why it's slow moving. <laughs> they can't get off the gap. No, it's just a joke. But I mean, as I mentioned, Rafi Mashulam finds THC or its structure and defines that and, and I think isolated it in 1964. And then you had, I think it was 1985, where he had Marinol get a, a accepted for market by the FDA or approved. Uh, and then 1993, you had the identification, or early 90s anyway, the elucidation of the endocannabinoid system. I mean, how many years ago was that? It was almost 30 years ago. So, and then you've had a number of things. And then uh, I think, was it 2008 when you had Epidiolex? uh approved i mean it's just innovation's gotta has to be there's got to be more rapidity and quicker development of cannabis cannabis innovation i think it's going to start happening and a lot of that's i think going to be due to new capital coming in and hopefully the idea is to catalyze some of that with the capital markets day at canmed right no, and it all com it all comes back to regulations and the legality of it as well, right? I mean, I got to think that that's got to be an impediment to innovation and investment too. I would think is you know that this, especially in the U.S., there's this gray area of okay, it's legal in my state, but it's not legal federally. I don't know if I yeah. really want to get into this. Yeah, well, I, there's a couple things that I think uh, on that point were interesting. I mean, when I first jumped into it in 2013. And, you know, 2014 at CERNA, you know, it was not easy to find good people because a lot of people back then, and it's definitely changed, but they were like, okay, well, if I get into this, it jump into cannabis or a marijuana company, it doesn't work. And that's on my resume. What happens? And nobody had the answer to that. Mm. Obviously, I think that stigma is certainly going away in a number of respects. But I mean, if you look back on the conversations I was having with some groups a uh, company here in Colorado that was doing some interesting thing with plant genetics and they'd looked at cannabis and this is 2013, 2014. Uh, but they were like, yeah, we're staying the hell away from it. I mean, because we talked to some people that were patent examiners and USPTO and back then the idea Ben with patents was, well, if you're a cannabis company, good luck with it because the only, the only group that had a, a patent issued 
uh, in cannabis at that time was the U.S. government. And most of the people were saying, well, you can't really get a cannabis patent through USPTO or the fact that, you know, if it does get litigated or whatever, it has to go into a court of law and they're not going to accept it because it's cannabis and national illegal. That certainly has changed now because, yeah, there's a lot of people now applying for patents. So it it takes time. Um, but the thought is, you know, it's unfortunately it's taken more time than we've really wanted it to. But innovation also, as we talked about, takes time. Absolutely. All right. So winding down here and before I let you go, David, I wanted to give you an opportunity to plug any websites or social media or just resources that the listeners can can go to to learn more about um, what it is you guys do. Well, thank you, uh, Ben. Yeah, well, really what we do, we're transactional experts. So whether it's doing a co-development deal, M&A, financing, reverse mergers, what have you, uh, that's really what we do. You can look us up at goldeneaglepartners.com. That's our website. You can certainly look me up, David Trailer on LinkedIn. Uh, and then also, obviously, if you want to Google my name, I mean, we've been mentioned uh Cool thing about Davos is I got mentioned in an article in Rolling Stone. So if you want to Google Rolling Stone and a weed grows in Davos, you can look that up. Or certainly Bloomberg. We've been mentioned in Bloomberg and a number of other in Yahoo, et cetera. So there's a lot of resources or uh, look us up, send me an email or give me a call. Love to love to talk to anybody that's interested in uh, furthering this industry and doing it in the right way. Excellent. I will put those links in the show description, uh, the ones that I can find. And so if you, people can click over and learn more about that. And I know that we're going to be adding more information on the CanMed website about the workshop. And um, so people should stay tuned to, to learn more about that. Definitely. No, thanks, Ben. Uh, it's appreciated. Thanks for the opportunity and I uh, hope to uh, do it again sometime. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with David Trailer. Check out the links in the show description to learn more about the topics we discussed. And thanks again to this episode's sponsor, Golden Eagle Partners. Our next episode will drop September 28th. That's two weeks from today. In the meantime, please do check out the new and improved CanMedEvents.com. The team really did an exceptional job updating the website with all the information about our CanMed 23 event. And of course, you can still find videos of all the previous CanMed presentations and panels in the CanMed archive. You can also find all the previous episodes of the podcast as well. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for email alerts to get all the notifications around this innovative industry-leading event. I also invite you to engage with us on all our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Just search for CanMed events. And lastly, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Doing so really helps us improve our rankings and reach more listeners. All right, that's it from us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and be sure to join us on the next CanMed Coffee Talk.